Welcome to the Madison Motor Podcast. Today is Thursday, August 24th, 2023. Today we're going to recap yesterday's baseball, soccer, and WNBA. Look at everything going on today. NFL preseason tonight as well. NFL center rankings, news and notes, and best bets. So we're going to try to keep this show quick. We'll start with baseball. Um, we will go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to today's window, which should be smaller. Cards over to Pirates, 6-4. Cubs over to Tigers, 6-4. Brewers over the Twins, 8, 7, and 10 on a walk-off infield single by Bryce Terang. White Sox over the Mariners, 5, 4, and 10 on a walk-off error. Um, Tim Anderson scored the run, and the throwing error was by um, J.P. Crawford. Um, Royals over the A's, 4, nothing. Giants over the Phillies, 8, 6, and 10. Doubleheader game one. Reds over the Angels, 9-4. Padres over the Marlins, 4-0. Rays over the Rockies, 6-5-10 and 10 on a walk-off single by Brandon Lau. Orioles over the Blue Jays, 7-0. Yankees finally end the nine-game losing streak with a 9-1 win over the Nationals. Aaron Judge, three-homer game. Um, so the Dodgers had a 3-1 lead on the Guardians. The game has been suspended. We'll resume on August 24th, which is today at 12 o'clock. Ugh, so I get the refund for best bet. Um, Braves over the Mets, 7-0. Red Sox over the Astros, 7-5-10. and 10, Big win for them. And the Reds over the Angels, 7-3 in doubleheader game two. So the Angels get swept in the doubleheader. All right, so um, the Dodger-Guardian game will resume at 12 o'clock today. So 1 o'clock today, you have the Nationals at the Yankees. So the Yankees in a matinee game at home in a first time in a while. Um, Patrick Corbett and Michael King, so they're going with an opener today. Um, so that opener strategy really hasn't worked out for the Yankees personally. But uh, Luis Severino pitched pretty well yesterday. but And I was right about the over, but I was wrong about um, both teams contributing. Yankees did it alone yesterday. Um, the Yankees are minus 220. The Nats are plus 184. Over under 8.5. Minus 10 each way. Nats plus 1.5 is minus 122. Yankees minus 1.5 is plus 102. Sneakily, the Nationals, um, Patrick Corbin hasn't been that terrible this year. He's been better. His ERA is under 5. The Nats are tempting at plus 184. But I do like the over in this spot again. Um... Rockies Rays, Peter Lambert and Sean Armstrong. Rays minus 250, Rockies plus 205, over under 8.5, overs minus 114, unders minus 106. Rockies plus 1.5 is minus 104, Rays minus 1.5 is minus 115. Um, tough one, but I like the, the, ooh, I'm going to go with the over, but I don't feel good about it. 2 o'clock, Red Sox Astros. Brian Balo and JP France. Um, Astros minus 126. Red Sox plus 108. Over under 9. Overs minus 105. Others minus 115. Boston plus 1.5 is minus 188. Astros minus 1.5 is plus 155. I like full game under a lot. That is a high number. 3 o'clock Dodgers. Guardians. Um, Ryan Papuai and Gavin Williams. Dodgers minus 132. Guardians plus 112. Over under 9. Minus 10 each way. Dodgers minus 1.5 is plus 118. Guardians plus 1.5 is minus 142. I like the under. I want to see. Oh, and that was only the bottom of the third. So maybe best bet would have lost anyway in the regular game. Um, So Blue Jays, Orioles, 7 o'clock. Jose Barrios and Kyle Gibson. Um, Orioles are slightly favored, minus 110. Jays are minus 106. Over under 9. Over is minus 102. And there's minus 120. Jays minus 1 half is plus 146. O is plus 1 half is minus 78. Jose Barrios has been excellent in the second half of the year. I'm taking the Blue Jays at minus 106 to bounce back after losing last night. They, The Blue Jays kind of need the game. Well, the Orioles kind of need the game, too. Um, the Rays are only three back of them in the loss column. Um, Cubs, Pirates, Justin Steele, and TBD. Cubs are minus 156. Pittsburgh's plus 132. Over on their 9. Overs minus 118. Unders minus 104. Cubs minus 1 half is plus 104. Pirates plus 1 half is minus 125. I like full game under a lot. I like a lot of unders. Rangers, Twins. Andrew Heaney, Pablo Lopez. Twins minus 130. Rangers plus 110. Over on their 8.5. Overs minus 114. Unders minus 106. 
Rangers plus one half is minus one eighty eight. Twins minus one half is plus one fifty five. I like the over in this game a little bit. Um, A's White Sox Ken Waldachuk and Jesse Schultens. White Sox minus one forty two. A's plus one twenty over under nine and a half. Overs minus one twenty. Others minus one two. A's plus one half is minus one seventy. White Sox minus one half is plus one forty. Um, tough one. But I'm going to do under four and a half White Sox runs at plus 118. Only because I don't think they'll score more than four. Maybe they, they lose 5-4. Maybe they win 4-1 or something. 940, Fox Sports 1, Red Steinbacks, Brandon Williamson, and Merrill Kelly. D-backs minus 178. Reds plus 150 over under nine. Over is even money. Under is minus 122. Reds plus one half is minus 142. D-backs minus one half is plus 118. Um... Sometimes I like picking one upset special. I'm going to do it here and take the Reds at plus 150. The Dynamax have kind of turned it on a little bit after a slide. Reds are only a half game better. Give me the Reds plus 150. Okay, now move on to soccer. Um, we'll go over notable games from last night. Which has, today we'll start the MLS. Um, LAFC over Colorado for nil. So LAFC... Um, still in second in the West. Um, Liga MX from last night. Um, America over Nacoxa, 3-2. Pachuca over Cruz Azul, 1-0. And Athletic San Luis over Lyon, 3-0. Um, we have a friendly today at 1.30 who have... Nemonica and Atletico. Um, we'll see if that is um, an option for us today. No, it is not. All right, we have a lot of um, Europa qualifying first legs. In the playoff round. Um, so, 1 o'clock, you have BK Hacken and Aberdeen. Um, we're just going to wing these really quick. Um, Hacken minus 200, Aberdeen plus 480, draw plus 350. We're going to do over 3.5 goals plus 130. Slavia, Pragu, and Lou Hanks. Um, so, Slavia is minus 600. Zoria is 11 to 1. The draw is 6 to 1. Over 3 and a half goals, plus 116. 2 o'clock. Dynamo, Zagreb, and Sparta. Um... Hmm. So, Dynamo plus 135, Sparta plus 210, draw plus 220. Uh, that's a hard one. I'm going to go with the draw plus 220 just for um for the value. Um, Olympija and FK, Carabag. Olympija plus 175, Carabag plus 165, draw plus 210. I'm going with the draw plus 210. Um, Little Goritz and Ajax. Uh, Ludo Gortz plus 310, Ajax minus 130, draw plus 290, over 3.5 goals plus 116. Um, 230, you have um, Slovan, Brustalava, and Aris FC Limassol. Um, Slovan plus 135, Aris plus 210, draw plus 210. Um, I'm going to go with the draw plus 210. Union Nestian FC Lugano. Uh, Union minus 180, Lugano plus 490, draw plus 310. Um, for this one, we're going to do under 2.5 goals plus 106. Um, KL, Kloksovic, and Sheriff. Um, Sheriff plus 115, uh, Kloksovar plus 250, draw plus 210. I'm going to go with Sheriff at plus 115, 3 o'clock. Olympiacos and 
Kukuriki. Olympiacos minus 410. Uh, Kukuriki, 10 to 1 draw plus for 80. We're going to do under 2.5 goals at even money. And Lask, Lings, and Zerjinski. Lask minus 145. Zerjinski plus 390. Draw plus 280. Um, I'm going to go with the draw at plus 280. There's conference league qualifying too, but we really don't have much time to get into that. We'll do the WNBA. Um, we have results to go over, and we have some games tonight as well. Um, Sparks over to Mercury, 91-62. So the Sparks pull out the Mercury. Sparks are 14-18, Phoenix 9-24. All right, four games tonight, 7 o'clock on Prime Video. I have the Liberty at the Sun. That's going to be an interesting game. Uh, the Liberty are giving 5.5, totals 164.5. You think that's kind of low, but I like the Sun getting the points. Um, and they're plus 198 to win outright, so I would take a shot with that. On Twitter, you have the Storm and the Fever. The Fever are giving 4.5 to the 161.5. Um, that's a lot of points for Indiana, so I'm going to take the Seattle Storm getting the 4.5. NBA TV at 8 o'clock, you have the Aces in the Sky. The Aces are giving a whopping 14.5 to the 169.5. That is a lot of points. Um but I'm going to go with the under. And it's weird going under in an Aces game, but I'm doing it. And then, last but not least, the Lynx and the Wings. The Wings are giving 7.5, total 167.5. Um, that's a lot of points for Dallas to be giving. I'm taking Minnesota getting the points. That is way too many points. All right, now we're going to move on to the NFL preseason. We have two preseason games tonight. It's the last week of the preseason. And then a week off, and then... Go time for the NFL. So for an exciting times for the league. First up tonight, seven o'clock on the NFL Network. You have the Steelers and the Falcons. Steelers are giving four and a half totals, thirty-eight and a half. Um, this is a tough one, but I'm going to lay the points of Pittsburgh. Um, I think you'll see Kenny Pickett for a couple series. We'll see Desmond Ritter for a couple series. And I just think the Steelers have better depth pieces than Atlanta, so I'm going to lay the points with Pittsburgh. And 8 o'clock on Prime Video, Colts, Eagles, Al Michaels, Kirk Herbstreit on the call. The Colts are favored by four and a half totals, 38 and a half. Um, that makes sense because they think we'll see a lot of Anthony Richardson. But I do like the over in this game because I think we'll have to see a lot of points. And I think maybe we'll see Jalen Hurts a series. We're going to see Richardson for a little bit. So I really do like the over in the Colts-Eagles game. All right, now I'll move on to my NFL center rankings. Um, as I was doing these rankings, I realized this, this position is not as strong as it used to be. A lot of guys are just on the back end of their careers or um, just guys that really haven't broken through yet that are young. So without further ado, my 2023 NFL center rankings. 32. Ashalte, Four Holt, Cardinals, 31. Juice Scruggs, Texans, 30. John Michael Schmitz, Giants, 29. Luke Fortner, Jaguars, 28. Lloyd Cushenberry, Broncos, 27. Aaron Brewer, Titans, 26. Jake Brindell, 49ers, 25. Nick Gates, Commanders, 24. Andre James, Raiders, 23. Josh Myers, Packers, 22. Drew Dahlman, Falcons, 21. Tyler Biadas, Cowboys, 20. Mason Cole, Steelers, 19, Ted Karras, Bengals. 18, Mitch Morse, Bills. 17, Eric McCoy, Saints. 16, Ryan Kelly, Colts. 15, Evan Brown, Seahawks. 14, Brian Allen, Rams. 13, Garrett Bradbury, Vikings. 12, Cody Whitehair, Bears. 11, Bradley Bozeman, Panthers. 10, Connor McGovern, Jets. 9, Tyler Linderbaum, Ravens. 8, Ethan Pachik, Browns. 7, Ryan Jensen, Buccaneers. 6, David Andrews, Patriots. 5, Connor Williams, Dolphins, four. Corey Lindsley, Chargers, three. Frank Ragnall, Lions, two. Jason Kelsey, Eagles. And number one, Creed Humphrey, Kansas City Chiefs. Creed Humphrey has been the best center in the league the last two years. He has been outstanding. He's keeping Patrick Mahomes upright, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. Jason Kelsey is just an ageless wonder at this point in his career. I thought about putting him number one, but... 
Kareem Humphrey's just been better, and he's younger too, and a decline might be coming for Jason Kelsey at some point. Um, Frank Ragnow is somebody that's awesome. Um, he has been um, really kept the Lions quarterback upright over the years, whether it's Stafford or Goff. Now, um, Lindsley is just not really stayed healthy, but when he's healthy, he's really good. Connor Williams, low key, has turned into a solid center. Um, not suggesting the Cowboys are going to regret that one, but um, the Dolphins got themselves a good ad. David Andrews, somebody that um. Has been rock solid over the years, protecting Tom Brady and now Mac Jones. Um, Ryan Jensen, I feel like that might be one that might t- take a dip without Brady there. Um, Pochick, I think, is pretty underrated, and he's on a good offensive line. Linderbaum really was rock solid as a rookie for the Ravens last year. He's only going to get better. And I know the Jets... Offensive line isn't super. But I think Connor McGovern being 10th says a lot about the position. And that's no offense to him. But McGovern isn't bad. He's just, I guess, average at this point. Um, Same for the next probably six guys on the list. Even Ryan Kelly, somebody that was thought out to be really good, but he's just average. Um, Eric McCoy has been a disappointment as a pro. You can make a case, but he got a second contract. So the Saints must really think he's going to uh, get better. Mitch Morse was someone that was awesome, but is on the decline. So, like I said, the center position is not what it used to be, and there's a lot of guys that are just average. Not that they're bad, it's just... They're mediocre. All right, now I'll move on to the news and notes for today. Um, we are going to start with baseball. Um, John Morosi just tweeted possible candidates to lead White Sox baseball operations. I just want to talk about this real quick. Chris Getz, who is the White Sox assistant GM and top internal candidate. James Click, who is... Um, someone that was a big part of the Astros organization, but is currently with the Blue Jays. He's their vice president of strategy. And Preston Mattingly, who is a Phillies executive. I like James Click for this job. Um, Chris Getz, I just don't like when teams hire internal unless, um, the guy that, um, proceeds leaves for another job or something like that. Like Joe Shane for Bill's assistant GM. Like that's when you promote somebody. Or if somebody retires. But if you're fired, then you got to hire external. That's my rule in all sports. So I think that the White Sox should go with James Clifford personally of anybody on that list. Um... But the big news of yesterday, Shoy Otani is a torn UCL. He will not pitch again this season and will get a second opinion to decide on surgery. Um, that's brutal. That's just not only brutal for the Angels, it's brutal for the sport. Um, he'll probably still win AL MVP because he's just been that amazing this year. He leads league in homers. He really... Um, the Angels really um, would have been among one of the worst teams in baseball without him. Um, So um, just by default that um, he's MVP, and maybe if Aaron Judge doesn't get hurt, maybe Judge would have made a run. But um, yeah, Otani is probably still going to win MVP, but um, that's just brutal that he has a torn UCL. And... You know, that's going to really 
impact his free agency, I think. Teams are going to be like, yeah, this guy gets hurt too much. We're out. That's why I feel like some teams weren't in on Aaron Judge. He's always hurt. We're out. People are going to say the same thing about Shohei Otani this winter. Watch. Um, Mike Trout going back on the injured list due to a hand injury after being activated on Tuesday. That sucks. That completely sucks. I really feel bad for Mike Trout. He's been hurt way too much. People looked at him as the best player in baseball, and he was the best player in baseball five years ago. He was the best player in baseball for a couple years until um, Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani showed up. So there was a period where it was him versus Judge for best player in the world. Now it's um, Otani, Judge, you could even argue Acuna. Um, Bryce Harper's always going to be in the conversation because he's Bryce Harper, but... um, so that's just brutal for the Angels. I don't think we'll see Mike Trout for the rest of the season. Um, Aaron Judge has a three-homer game. We talked about that earlier. He pretty much single-handedly ended the Yankees' nine-game losing streak. And he's not even healthy, which is the crazy part about this. Aaron Judge, that's what makes him so special. The fact that he can just produce when he's clearly not healthy. That's why he's the Patrick Mahomes and Stephen Curry of the sport. Patrick Mahomes... Wasn't healthy a lot last year, and he still produced. Stephen Curry produces when he's not healthy. LeBron was like that, or still is like that, amazingly enough, at his age. Tom Brady was like that. Um, Otani even's like that a little bit. So that's what makes Aaron Judge so special. Padres reliever Robert Suarez becomes the fourth MLB pitcher to be tossed during sticky substance check this season. Um, that's not great for the Padres. That's a team that's badly underachieved this year. They're probably the most disappointing team in all baseball. Everyone's going to say the Yankees and the Mets. But people picked the Padres to win the World Series this year, so they have to uh, be considered. And people picked them to win their division, although people did pick the Yankees to win their division. Not a lot of people picked the Mets to win their division because of the presence of the Braves, but... To me, San Diego is the most disappointing team in the league. And then the Yankees and the Mets are second and third. Um, and then, obviously, the Cardinals are right there, too. Uh, and speaking of the Yankees, um, Brian Cashman called the season a disaster. He's right. That's the one thing I'm going to give Brian Cashman credit for, his honesty. He has not done a good job putting the roster together over the past couple of years. But... He's always not afraid to speak to the media, unlike some other GMs in New York. But that's what um, it's good about Brian Cashman. He's not afraid to speak the truth to the media, unlike the GM I'm referring to, Leon Rose of the Knicks, who continues to run and hide from the cameras when something goes wrong. But that might be um, a little bit of uh, a, a Knicks ownership issue with Dolan, but um, yeah, at least Brian Cashman has the the balls to speak to the media when things are going poorly. But yeah, that's an MSG issue. The Rangers people don't speak out on bad seasons either, so that's an MSG issue, let alone a Leon Rose, um, Chris Drury issue. So I just um, wanted to talk about that comment, but he's right. He calls it a disaster and a shock. Which he's not wrong. It's Cashman's not wrong. It is a disaster and it is a shock that the Yankees are sixty one and sixty five. Um, the Athletics have not considered selling as John Fisher's focus remains finding a new home for the A's and mid fan pressure to sell franchise. Yikes! That's just an awful situation going on in Oakland. People chanting "sell the team" everywhere. Um. So, now we'll do um, more soccer. We didn't even talk about this. Um, Miami came back to beat FC Cincinnati in the uh, um, in the semifinals last night of the 
Um, forget that tournament. The U.S. Open Cup. We forgot to talk about those results. Um, it was 3-3, and Miami advanced 5-4 on penalties, and Messi's just a man on a mission. And then Real Salt Lake... Um, advance an extra time. It says 3-1. Oh, wait a minute. Dynamo did beat RSL, but ESPN, for some reason, has the arrow next to Real Salt Lake, like Real um, Salt Lake won. So it's going to be Real Salt Lake against Inter-Miami for the U.S. Open Cup. So uh, Messi's going to be playing in that. Um... Cooper Flag has been a hot topic lately. Um, he'll take visits to Duke, Kansas, and UConn this fall. Um, you know the big schools are going to be heavily recruiting him. Um, I think Duke's probably the favorite. All these big stars go to Duke. I know Coach K's not there anymore, but if I at gunpoint, Cooper Flag just reeks Duke. Um, so the Hornets reveal new uniforms as. The 1997 to 2002 double pinstripes return for this year's classic edition uniform. So that's pretty cool. Um, football. Um, the Giants acquire 2020 number eight overall pick Isaiah Simmons for a 2024 seventh round pick. That is a steal for the Giants. Isaiah Simmons. It's just sad because he never. Panned out in Arizona. Everyone thought he was going to be the star linebacker. And it just never panned out. And to get him for a seventh round pick, I think, is a steal. And now the question is, what happens with Trey Lance? Because Sam Darnold beat him out for the backup quarterback job in San Francisco to Brock Purdy. And now the 49ers are exploring options for Trey Lance. They... I think they're gonna gonna cut him. It's sad. He has turned out to be one of the bigger busts I could remember. And in terms of a high draft pick, you go up to trade him. That's gonna set the 49ers back for a long time if it hasn't already. And he was absent from practice yesterday. Too, which is crazy. And then um, Kyle Shanahan says he really is hoping Trey remains an option on the team heading into next season. So we'll see about that. Jonathan Taylor has a Tuesday trade deadline as six teams have asked about his availability. Two have discussed offers, including Miami. I think he should go to the Dolphins. Um, he'd make that team a lot better. And that improves their running back situation. Their offensive line's better not better than the Colts, but the Colts' O-line isn't as good as it used to be. So I think the Dolphins with Tua would be a great add there, a good security blanket for him. Um, and speaking of Tua, um, Ryan Clark made a, a comment about Tua saying that he wasn't in the gym this offseason, and then Tua fired back at Ryan Clark, which was pretty funny. I suggest you guys check it out. Um college um so the ACC is still eyeing more teams as Cal Stanford and SMU are under serious consideration and the conference will decide in the week wow I thought Cal and Stanford weren't going over there I guess um it's not dead yet um Notre Dame athletic director Jake Swarbrick blasts the college football um realignment for the conferences and he says it's been a complete disaster i agree with him because the pac-12 is falling apart teams in the that should be in the pac-12 are in the big 10 where teams in, on the east coast like Rutgers and penn state have to travel all the way to california to play usc and all the way to to washington state to play the huskies and all the way to oregon to play the ducks so that's crazy. Um, hockey news. Um, Austin Matthews gets a contract extension. Four years. A little over $13 million a year. Highest played player 
in the NHL. Um, the Leafs had to do it. No doubt about it. So, altogether, it's four years, $53 million. So, good on Austin Matthews and the Leafs for getting it done. And then Paul Bizanet is very fired up about it, too. And then one more hockey news is that the league is forming a new competition as Deputy Commissioner announces the league is working with the NHLPA to create an international competition for February of 2025. So that's pretty cool that they're doing that. And I think that opens up Pandora's box a little bit, like how the NBA is doing with um, the FIBA. So maybe they see that and how successful that is. So um, I think that is um, pretty cool. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I have a lot of options. Um, and I like a lot of unders baseball so I am going to go with the same route wait a minute so um they did a refund me on the uh on the Dodger Guardian bet that stinks Um, so, for this one, I'm going to do a quarter of a unit. Um, I think nine is high for the Dodgers Guardians. So, I'm going to do that. So, back-to-back unders and Dodgers Guardians. So, a quarter unit, minus 110, under nine between the Dodgers and the Guardians for my best bet of the day. All right, that's it. Hopefully, we'll catch two best bets today. Um, so tomorrow, we'll have the regular show. And then today, I'm going to come down with two more shows. Um, so the FIBA World Cup preview show we'll do tomorrow. And I feel bad because I didn't pick any of the games for tomorrow so we'll do that on the on the FIBA show um but we won't pick the weekends we'll just do tomorrow's picks on the FIBA preview show and then I'm going to try to drop the college football season predictions show today as well and then Italian Serie A for soccer we still have to uh post that as well. So a lot of busy times ahead for the Matter of Miller podcast and it's exciting with football coming back and such. Hope you guys have a great day everybody.